Hi everyone, welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. You can find me at heavenlybackyardastro.com. I'm Pat Prokop. Now if you've been watching my videos, you know just last week I was talking about temperatures in the upper 70s here in Savannah. Well, it's a week later and we're back to normal, actually a little below normal. Last night it got down to 31 degrees. You know, for Savannah that's pretty cold, but it was also a night of excellent stargazing. The sky was a 10 out of 10. When I was looking up in the heavens up around 1 o'clock in the morning, the stars looked like diamonds in the sky. So I took the 11 inch uh, Celestron, opened it up at F10, and went out to shoot the uh, uh, Phantom Galaxy, a galaxy that's hard to see, hence the name the Phantom, also known as Messier 74. And I took over two hours of data, uh, two minute exposures, uh, 70 exposures, uh, giving me two hours and uh, 20 minutes, I think it comes out to be. And I was all excited about it because I was looking at the incoming data and it looked really, really good until I stacked it. And I went into uh, Pixon site and I stretched it and I went, oh no, it looked terrible. I did the uh, some bias. I took uh, 30 bias frames. And I took 30 dark frames. Still, it looked terrible after stacking with all that. I was going, what to do? I hated to lose all this data. I mean, look at it. It's it's terrible looking. The flats come to the rescue. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. So, what did I do to rescue my work? Well, all it takes is two things. Number one, a rubber band that will fit around the 11 inch uh, Celestron telescope. And number two, one of my t-shirts. Yeah, a white t-shirt. Let me show you what I, what I did. The first thing is to take t-shirt and you put it, and you put it over the lens. The rubber band comes in handy for two reasons. For two reasons, number one, it holds it on, and number two, you can, you can stretch it. One of the next things I do is I point it to a bright area of the sky, and I usually have to do this in the morning time when the uh, sun just rises, and I point it in the opposite side of the sky, and it's bright enough, but not overwhelmingly bright. Now, if you have a light plate, that, that, that'll be even greater. Uh, you can do you know, make your flats at night. But uh, one of the things that's very important though is to, to help alleviate this situation is make sure your camera is clean. That's very important. I, I did not clean the camera uh, last night and I really should have. But anyway, if you have these spots, the flats, unbelievable. It's just unbelievable how much clearer your picture will be if you take flats. Let's go upstairs to the computer. All right, there are several ways of taking flats. The way I'm going to show you tonight is, or today, is the uh, using SharpCap Pro. Uh, it's very easy in SharpCap Pro. Uh, first of all, you of course open up your camera, uh, which in this case um, I have the uh, camera as the uh, Altair Astro 294C ProTec and uh, it's taking the images right now. And also, it's important to have your settings the same as you had when you were taking your imagery during the night. Now, in this case, I had a binning of 1.1, I had a full frame using fit, fit files. Now, a lot of times this program will default to uh, uh, SER files. Um, so you have to make sure you select fit, fit files or fits files. And, uh, uh, then, and then you find uh, a place in the scale where you can see uh, the flat image as it is. Now, where to put the uh, light level, that's a good question, but it makes it easy in a lot of these uh, programs. What, what we do here in SharpCap uh, is to um, go to Tools and open a histogram. And there is the histogram there uh, right underneath my picture. And what you want is this white line uh, to fall between 40 and 60 percent, ideally 50 percent. Uh, helpful would be logarithmic scaling, and there you can see 
uh, the scale. It's a little dark, so I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit by adding some gain. Now I had the uh, oh, and I did, um, the setting was uh, I had it set at a gain of five thousand. Uh, so I uh, want to keep that at five thousand. That was the imagery from last night. Now what I want to do here is increase the speed a little bit to give me more light. As I increase it, you'll see the scale down here jump, and it went a little bit too far that time. So. But let's bring it back just a little bit, 7.2 microseconds, and uh, it's still a little hot. Let's bring it back just a little bit more, 6.2 might be too low. Nope, that's right on, uh, let's bring it up just a, let's go 6.5, I'll type it in. There it goes, 6.5, and bingo, that looks really good. Now if you look in the picture here, you can already see a lot of these imperfections showing up on the camera lens. Uh, this is what the flats will take out. Um, if I stretch, all right, I'm in Pix and Sight right now, and I want to show you the difference between uh, the picture without flats, with the uh, calibration frames and no flats, and then everything with the uh, picture, the calibration frames, and the flats part of the calibration frames. So let's take the first one and look at it, and this is the uh, raw image I had uh, did it, had done a automatic background extraction, and I need to uh, stretch it out. Screen transfer function right here. All right. What I'm going to do here now is stretch it, and the moment of truth. And you're, oh my gosh, look at that horrible picture! All these spots all over it. I did some dithering on that, but the, it, it's, the, the spots are just. This picture is just ruined with these spots. So there we have the one. So let's do it with the darks over here, and open that up and stretch it out, and add in the darks. It it didn't do much to it. It took out that little starburst. See the, the starburst here from the camera, uh, the light, whatever, the camera burst, starburst. That's gone, but I still have these horrible spots all over the place, and that's really going to make it difficult to try to use this image, even though I got a lot of great light in the, uh, the uh, Phantom Galaxy here, Messier 74. But let's take a look after the same thing using flats. And here's the raw image. I'm going to stretch it out. Man, what a difference. It's amazing how much clearer that picture is just by using flats. Um, here's a comparison at A. And let's pull this out of here. Uh, I'm going to show you this in a second. Um, there's B. Actually, that's C. A, B, and C. What a difference that makes. And the final image, after processing a little bit, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm going to take that and pass it through Photoshop, and that's what you're going to see at the end of this video. So once again, take flats.